To scroll web pages in Part My Desktop, we have at least two ways. One, it's easier to implement, however, it's more limited. And the other is more powerful and more flexible, however, it takes a bit of more time to set up. And on this tutorial, we will learn both. So, getting started by the easy one. So, I'm here on the booking platform. And let's say, uh, after a search, we want to scroll, just by example, uh, to the property type element. So, how we can do it in the easy way, let's say. So, here on part of my desktop, I've already uh, it, the flow set up to attach to the running instance, so to this web page. So, to scroll into uh, the element, uh, let's use the focus text field on web page action. And so here, let's add the UI helmet. So let's add it and let's save. And let's see if it works. So let's just scroll to the top so we can see if the scroll is done. And let's run to see. And we can see that it worked. So the property type, uh, so the scroll was done even to the property type helmet. So uh, for this case, the focus test field action works well. However, for example, for content that isn't loaded uh, yet on the web page, so just to explain, you can see, for example, on booking that there is content that is only loaded after a bit of scrolling. So that is called lazy uh, loading. So the content is loaded while the user scrolls it down so isn't loaded everything at tons and that's for performance purposes so for example let's here indicate an element that only appears after a bit of scrolling so isn't loaded by default so if we do that here on this action so i'll indicate here this label and if we refresh Let's just, well, go to the top, refresh. And now if we run, we'll get an error. And what error will say is that uh, the field, uh, the helmet wasn't found. And why it wasn't found? Because it isn't loaded yet. So that's a huge limitation of this approach because it only works with elements already rendered on the web page. And here we can see the element wasn't found. So how to deal with these use cases where we have to scroll until a element that isn't loaded uh, by default needs a scroll as on this case. So for that we have other approach that we can use. So let's just disable this action. And so the approach uh, consists on running a JavaScript function. So we will use the window.scroll to uh, function, so method. So what does this? It does the scroll at the horizontal and vertical. So first we need to indicate the horizontal scrolling. So here we don't want horizontal scrolling on booking. So we just need vertical. So let's add here a zero and then add a comma and indicate the vertical scrolling. So the vertical scroll position. So let's say, 5,000. So the more, uh, the bigger the number, the more scroll uh, we'll have. So let's save and see how it works. So let's just refresh and uh, run. And we can see it uh, was done the scroll. However, if we run again, we can see that it will stay at the same place. Because here we are indicating the well the vertical scroll position. So after scrolling one time, if we indicate again the same position, it will just stay on the same place. So there will be no scroll. So uh, to do always a scroll, what we need to do is to set up a loop, and then uh, probably uh, you want to scroll until a specific element appears. And so we can do a validation like if the element didn't appear, scroll again. And then again, again, until the element appears. So that's what we'll set up here now on this tutorial. So let's say that we want to scroll uh, until just uh, by example, until the load more results button that only appears after a bit of scroll. 
how we can do it. So first, uh, let's set up a loop. And here we can use uh, two types of loops. So we can use the loop that just runs a specified number of times, or we can use a loop condition that just runs while a condition is true. So for example, here the condition is while uh, the element, uh, the button is not found. So let's use the loop condition one. However, be aware that if you use on your uh, automations, also uh, on this loop condition, it's uh, better to use um, fallback, like if the loop runs more than 200 times, let's say, uh, to break it, because uh, just by having a condition, if uh, waiting for element to appear, it might cause infinite loops. So it's important to be aware of this uh, situation that could happen. So let's just save for now and let's create a variable that will be like the flag that uh, will allow us to know if the element was found or not. We will use it to control here the loop. So let's use the set variable and here let's create the variable, variable element found. And here let's set by default to false. And uh, so here, so let's, uh, so on the loop condition, let's take the element found variable. And so we want to run the loop while the element found its uh, variable as the value false. So while this is true, we want to run the loop. And so what we'll do on the loop, we will run uh, the scroll, so the JavaScript function that will do the scroll. Now uh, we have uh, to make this uh, to increment uh, per each loop. So we'll create another variable. So here let's create the variable vertical scroll position. So here by default will be 5000. And uh, now Let's pass this variable here on the function. And uh, well, after uh, running the function, we need to validate if the element already appeared. So for that, we can go to browser automation. And so here uh, we can see if web page uh, contains, well, a specific element. So we can use this action. So if web page contains element and now we need to indicate the element. So let's indicate here the load button. So if this element appears, uh, we will set the variable value. So here we'll set uh, the variable value. So the element found one, two, true and save. So if the element appears after the scroll, we will set the variable uh, element file to true. And so this will make the loop to be stopped because the condition here is not true anymore. Else, uh, what we want to do, we want to do more scrolling. So uh, here, what uh, we will do is after here, uh, this condition, uh, let's use the increment, uh, the increase better, the increase variable action. So let's here increase the variable vertical scroll by its value. So let's always double the scrolling. So by the way, on the second loop, it will be 10,000 and then it will be always more and more. So and that's uh, basically it. So let's see how it's running. So I'll just refresh here uh, the platform. So let's refresh and make sure we don't have the content. So everything loaded. So let's run and see how it's working. So we can see it's being done. The scroll was done. Scroll again. And uh, I do think that the button already appeared. And so 
basically was ended the flow because the element was found and so the loop stopped. So that's how we can uh, set up uh, this kind of scroll that is more flexible. Just another tip here, uh, we can uh, also scroll, um, well, even more. We can use here, uh, instead of this uh, setting the position, the scroll position, we can use here the following. So I'm just getting it to make sure I put it right. So I have here on the notes. So we can use document.body.scroll8. So basically this scrolls to the bottom of the document. So, um, well, of the web page. So let's just refresh and see. So uh, let's run. And so basically it scrolls the maximum possible and then uh, well, uh, we are doing the validation and uh, well, if the element appears, which was the case after the second scroll, if I'm not wrong, the loop stops and the flow ends. So uh, instead of using like a, a fixed number or a specific number uh, of position of the scroll, we can use here document.body.scroll8 that will scroll, um, well, the maximum possible on the web page. And that's it for our tutorial. I hope you liked it. If you liked it, please give a thumbs up and also consider to subscribe to the channel and enable the notifications bell so you don't miss any tutorial released here on the channel.